All right, welcome back. So uh, let's go to the next chapter. Uh, the evangelist restoration of the ministry of the evangelist. Now, this is a uh, more of a practical chapter that uh, what I'd like each one of us maybe to do is whenever you're free, uh, choose any one evangelist, read about him, see how his ministry was. Now, even as you do this, uh, uh, there will be, you know, many, many a times the, you know, the, the people who we study about, they may have failed in certain areas in life, right? So there are instances where God has used people greatly, right? They've been doing, they did a wonderful ministry, but they failed in the area of looking after their family. Or they've done wonderful ministry and they failed in their marriage, right? Uh, it, was, it was a broken marriage. Why? Because all the time they were in ministry. So, so what I'm trying to get at is uh, you can probably choose any one person, read about him, but take what is important, learn about their lives, be encouraged uh, with their life as well so that, you know, uh, It'll help us, right? Uh, and learn, learning from their lives is good, uh, but also learning their failures is good because we can avoid those failures, right? So let's look briefly at the restoration of the ministry of the evangelists. Now, after the book of Acts and after all the apostles and the disciples were martyred, uh, the ministry obviously went on. And we don't know much about who took on the roles of leadership, but we do, do know that uh, there was Eusebius, there was uh, other people who were who became leaders in the church after uh, after a while. And uh, and let's look at a few of them, right? Uh, Eusebius was the earliest church historian, right, occupying the first steps in succession of the apostles. Now, what did he do? He set on, on a journey uh, from home to work as an evangelist. He preached the word of God in places where the gospel was not reached, right? And he used uh, faith as his most powerful tool to bring out uh, the ministry. And if you do a study about his life, um, you know, he was a man of extreme faith, just like you know, many years later, we see John G. Lake also. He was a man of extreme faith, and uh, uh, Eusebius was was one of that. Right, wherever he went, he demonstrated extreme faith in God, um, uh, and he journeyed to many places. He came. He journeyed to uh, India, as far as India, being an evangelist to the world. Uh, the ministry of the evangelist is again evidenced after that by many other. Uh, you know, groups of, um, you know, groups of ministries, right? So, for example, the Hussites, the the Lollards, the Puritans, the Methodists, uh, the Presbyterians. Now, it, when we study church history, we'll see that there were a lot of groups that were, you know, that came up during the early church, right? But in all these groups, we don't see any of them saying no need to preach the gospel gospel itself will come to everyone we don't see that all these groups had one thing in common you have to go and preach the gospel now whether it's right or wrong that is secondary but they had one thing in mind go preach the gospel they all were involved in the work of the evangelism right uh, and so when we look at this um, Later on in church history, we see George Whitefield, right, who has uh, crossed the Atlantic Ocean 13 times. He he would preach uh, from between 5,000 to 50,000 people. Now, George Whitefield was a um, contemporary of John Wesley, right? And he was known to be a man of, you know, whenever he spoke, it was like flames of fire would come out of his mouth. So it's wonderful to read about these uh, men of God. You know, they, George Whitfield, even in his his own house in his room, it was said that you know they were, uh, uh, you know, as they were burying him, they saw two on his knees. His knees was there was no knees, 
it was capped it was just gone inside and uh, so they wondered why is it like this and then they as they were cleaning up his room and uh, getting rid of all the things they saw two holes on the ground right and they realized that he had spent so many hours in prayer that eventually there were holes on the strong flooring and that's why his knees were capped he was a man of extreme prayer right and he did wonderful ministry reaching out to many people preached many gospels again john and charles wesley dedicated their lives but more than charles it was john wesley who went uh from england to different parts of the world right in the 18th uh at the end during the 18th century century he he preached more than uh, you know he traveled more than two hundred thousand miles preached more than twenty thousand sermons um went mostly you know by horseback ministering to the red indians the uh, illiterate the poor and also the elite right uh, those who are well you know uh, advanced in knowledge so we see that the ministry of the evangelists were restored by these great men and women of god uh, in church history right and even now in a day and age that we are in the work of the evangelist is never 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 going to stop right now this is such an encouragement for us right uh, it's not like okay this is done we are over everyone can you know just relax start start something no the work of the evangelist will continue till his second coming it will continue and actually if you read the book of revelations after that after you know the uh, the the rapture and during the whole time of the tribulation there's a great revival right one side the enemy is doing all his work right bringing to, uh, you know all these plagues and diseases and the other side there's this world revival that happens and god uses those two witnesses to again to reach out and touch many many lives so so until the last page, the book of Revelations, the work of the evangelist will continue, right? So maybe what we can do is, uh, I want to encourage all of us, maybe you can choose one person, um, right? Uh, now, this is not an assignment, and you're not going to get marked for it. Uh, but this is just going to encourage us, right? You can take your time do a research about this person you can choose somebody study about him and and you probably if you want to write it down you can write it down if you want to put it on a word document and just go through it go ahead and do that but just choose an evangelist uh, and look at his or her life uh, you can go up to even you know the this century so no problem uh, but the point is take in uh, you know learn from their lives right uh, learn the good things learn their success and learn from their failures as well right so if any of you would like to share maybe next month or the following month you'd like to share uh, the document or you want to share during the class we leave it open so you can also share your thoughts as well so you can keep it a little bit interactive is that okay any questions and uh, is that okay? Uh, I don't think oh another assignment. Yes, Pastor. Right. Uh, it's not an assignment, right? It's it's just so that we can learn, right? We can all learn together. Uh, okay. So let's move. I I wanted to uh, finish this chapter, chapter five. The practical keys to doing the ministry of the evangelist. Practical keys, right? Seven points. First one, follow the biblical pattern of the evangelist. Now, we read those verses in the previous class. What is the biblical pattern of the evangelist? To move from one place to another, ministering the gospel, reaching out to those who are lost. So follow the biblical pattern. Right? Uh, I remember this one preacher, uh, one of my known a known pastor this happened in north india and i was talking to him and he said 
uh, you know what, I invited this very well-known uh, uh, evangelist uh, to come and minister in my church. And do you know what happened? I said, yeah, tell me what happened. And he said, the evangelist, that person asked for five huge sum of money. Right? I don't know if the others can relate to that about, but a huge sum of money to come and minister for one hour. Just for an hour, right? A huge sum of money. And this pastor was shocked. He was shocked for two reasons. One, first of all, the Bible says that freely we receive, freely we give, right? It's good to bless them. That is secondary. And two, he was shocked because there was no, uh, there was there, like there was no feeling of, uh, you know, oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. I shouldn't be asking for it boldly, right? Just open about it. You have pay me so much, I'll come and minister. And as he was saying this, I, I remember this pastor, he he teared up saying, he asked me one question, what is the ministry coming to? If now we are like this, what is it going to be 10 years from now? Right? But, you know, we, we just were discussing and we ended with prayer and we said, no, God knows. This is God's work. God knows what he's going to do, how he's going to do it. God is raising up faithful stewards of God who will bring the gospel in truth, in power, with integrity and honor. Right? So we were encouraged. But we will see these discouraging you know, things happening. Right now, I'm not saying don't you know don't bless or or don't uh, ask for money, but there's a way to do things, right? Uh, of course, we want to bless people, bless people in ministry, uh, but demanding things like this is is not right. What did the Bible say? You know, we read in Luke, right? When you go into a house, if they offer you anything, take it, right? Take it and have it. Be pleased with it. Bless them. If they don't, it's okay. Move on. Right? Uh, so that's a biblical pattern. What is the point? We are to reach out the gospel. Right? So it's very important that we follow the biblical pattern of the evangelist. Two is develop the supernatural. Now, some of us may say, hey, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. I'm, I'm still learning about it. That's all right. One thing we should learn is we develop the gifts of the Spirit. We develop in the supernatural, right? Uh, many a times, you know, we have conferences. We have weekend schools. Why do we have all this? Because we want to develop ourselves in the supernatural. There will be times when, you know, uh, I have we, we have prayed over people. They've not received healing. There are times they've received healing, right? But we, we are continuing to develop, continuing to grow. Now, the supernatural is not something which is a box, right? You can't put God in a box and say, okay, God, you work like this only. No. God can do anything in any way, anyhow. So the supernatural is a huge area that we can all develop in. right? So we develop, we grow. Now, what are some key points or, or key ways to develop in the supernatural? First, spend time in God's word. Let God speak to you. Read and see how God worked miracles. Now, you know, uh, I was talking to some of my some people, uh, you know, that I know, and they were saying, you know what, um, I'm going on reading the book of Acts, but uh, uh, I'm seeing the supernatural and praying, but I'm not, you know, uh, able to flow in it. So I said, is so you know, it's not only about reading it; it's about understanding it. What is their life? So I told this person, you go back, go read the life of Elijah. I said Old Testament, yeah, yeah. Read the life of Elijah. Did he do, did he do the supernatural? Of course he did. Read the life of Elisha. Did he do the uh, supernatural? Yes. What about uh, you know uh, Moses? So you read their life. 
how did they develop they didn't have the gospel they didn't have the word they didn't have all these you know uh, the holy spirit to lead them every step of the way meaning inside of them right can you picture elijah standing there on the mountain trying to you know he's he's telling the people one against thousands he's telling them now let's see whose god is a true god that's a supernatural work of god supernatural demonstration of god's power elisha is telling neman neman you go you dip yourself seven times and you'll be healed so we're seeing all these things right we're seeing god working so beautifully thirdly develop the ability to present the gospel in various audiences um now as an evangelist we will get opportunities to minister to various audiences right so for example you have the church then you have people who are in colleges youth then you have teens now if i'm talking to a set of youth or teens i'm not going to be talking about marriage how to love your wife and how to love your husband that they'll switch off right uh, say hey pastor i'm not married yet so i need to develop this ability to minister to them in the right way right now if i'm talking to a you know maybe a couple or an older couple i'm not going to be talking about instagram and facebook right uh, then i'm not presenting the gospel in the right way right so i need to develop that ab ability now the gospel remains the same but how we portray it it's up to us how we you know uh, uh present the gospel is up to us right and that is something which god gives god puts on us right we must do it and right? we can't say god you know give me the exact sentence and i will say that no yes we ask god god lead us give us the wisdom you know, we'll ask questions we will answer them and give us the right words put the right words in our mouth yes but we don't say god give me the exact sentence that i should speak no god puts the onus on us we have to we know the gospel we have to present it the right way right so we need to develop that ability if it's true for working professionals you know uh, you talk about something that they can relate to uh fourth one maintain your passion for souls very important what is passion can you tell me what is passion i'm sure all of us have something that we are passionate about but what is what is passion uh, passion generally means love for something okay very good thank you isaac uh, yes lubega a strong love for something that you don't feel okay when you don't do it ah uh, yes yes thank you lebega i like that last sentence that you said a strong love for something that you don't feel okay when you don't do it right? you're so passionate about it anybody else well, what do you think is passion yes anyone else go ahead said paul any thoughts zeli any thoughts yes go ahead said so passion for me is something like in which you have interest and you have a great zeal for something okay a great like, zeal like some people they are having passion for music they dedicate their whole life in music they every time they uh, music in their in, in their mind and they are always trying to pursue that thing they are always like i want to make this beat that tune something like that yeah yeah thank you so much sid yes very true something that uh, they probably give their whole life to for right that's that's nice zeli says a strong feeling or emotion for something right a strong feeling or emotion yes that's right great so we all are passionate about something yes now if some of you if any of us are not passionate about anything please pray and ask god 
to make you passionate about something because i'm sure you will be passionate about something right no it could be anything it doesn't need to be something super spiritual right um i was speaking to one of our young teens from church right and as i was talking to him uh, uh he's probably about ninth or tenth standard and as i was talking to him uh this boy we were talking talking and you know what is he passionate about he was passionate about knitting right and so what he does is he knits different you know uh, uh images or different pictures of different kinds of things and he's passionate about it and i was so surprised and i really learned a lesson you know that day because sometimes we say okay guys should only like this or girls should only like this no god can put a desire or a passion a burning desire in us regarding anything right and what he does is he once he knits these things he he uh, freely donates it to children's homes and he he blesses the poor with it or you know it's just what he's passionate about now here's the thing passion is something that we can also lose right let me give you an example how many of you have tried to learn an instrument and given up tell me jafina has done that okay sid and anita okay you all have tried to learn an instrument you're very passionate about it so hey one day i want to play that's how many you given up right so what does it say there is a possibility to for us to lose passion about things now one is there are two things one is it could be because naturally we may just tend to say hey this is too much of a task uh it's better i do something else right naturally we feel okay two is the enemy steals that from us right he steals that especially if it's something to do with god something to do with ministry something that god really has put in our hearts the enemy will come to steal that so for example maybe some of you are pa passionate about worship right to say god i am going to spend 2 hours in worship every day we start off say tomorrow i'm going to start we start day 1 day 2 by the time day 5 has come oh god passion has gone nobody is there there's no music there's no instruments i uh, uh there's no band i don't feel like worshiping the passion is gone right now the point here says maintain your passion for souls you have to maintain your passion i have to maintain my passion right there will be times when we are pursuing what god has given us there'll be weakness there'll be weariness there'll be tiredness you feel like god i just want to break i want to break i want to stop but a passion is a burning desire right it can't just stop because you can't you can't give up something because it's burning inside but what paul says fan into flame a passion for your name so we have to fan it no we have to fan the flame if if, if we don't fan the flame the that flame is going to go off right we can look at a person and feel hey what what is this person doing or we can look at the person and think hey is there a way that i can share the gospel with this person is there a way i can bring christ into his life how do i do that lord give me a way that's passion now whether we do it or not that is secondary but that passion is still there lord it's been 5 years you know i'm leading worship or i'm i'm preaching the gospel but i feel so dry inside we all go through those seasons right feel so dry inside lord uh, you know i'm just serving and ministering but nothing's happening inside stop pause and say god 
fan into flame a passion for your name a passion for your desire right maintain that passion in everything right i remember this a uh, couple of weeks back uh, you know i was a bit down and i said okay i'm not going to wake up today i want to sleep right? but you know when we have that passion it doesn't matter what and i'm not saying i have all the passion i'm just trying to say that you know there will be times right you know you just want to like give up but when we ask the holy spirit lord help me to maintain that passion that is zeal for you and he continues to do that for us we uh, are to maintain that we say god give me that passion for souls give me the passion to do your ministry in the right way right learn how to equip the saints in the ministry i love what apostle paul says forget the verse chapter and verse but he says you are my crown in heaven the first time i read it i thought how can how can these people i mean who god has paul has ministered to how can they be a crown you know i always thought oh paul will come with his list of missionary journeys and all the wonderful things he did directly into heaven no need judgment i think just just go in paul you've done the work but paul is saying you are my crown the people who were saved by the gospel through his preaching through his ministry they are the crown when he goes to heaven so as leaders we are to raise up leaders who are passionate about ministry when ministering to a local church submit to the leadership of the local pastor right like i gave you that example right uh the pastor who called the evangelist that's the wrong thing to do submit to the leadership when the pastor says certain things gives you a certain time submit to it right be so sensitive to the local church order which means what now when you go to minister to different places maybe in some churches you'll feel that you'll see the men at one side and the women at another side now don't go there and preach and say we are all one in christ we can all sit together you don't have to do that right or you may say uh, some of the churches may say remove your footwear and come in now we are not to go there and say that is for moses not for us right or you women you don't have to cover your hair it's okay just be normal so we need to be sensitive right you know there are times when i've gone to certain churches certain ministries and i've and these ministries don't believe in the holy spirit right they don't believe meaning they don't believe uh, in the gifts of the holy spirit and all of that uh, they believe that after the book of acts it's all stopped but i went they invited me and i went i preached and i shared the gospel right i shared the true gospel i shared about what the holy spirit does and some of them didn't like it some of them liked it some of them uh, uh, wanted me back to come and teach some of them didn't want me back right uh but the point is i did not say you're doing something wrong and i am right no because when we point fingers uh we are bad that would be a bad evangelism strategy right it's to when we are evangelizing as evangelists we have to say hey we are not perfect we are also learning but this is what i have learned from the gospel this is what the truth of the word is so uh being sensitive to the local church finally as an evangelist even as you decide to be one be connected to a local church right um uh, there will be times when now when you're connected to a local church does not mean you you know share the gospel with everyone in the church and then tell them okay why don't you go here or why don't you that would be again the wrong thing so let me just put this book up um, yeah so uh, i encourage each one of us to read this book right uh, divine order in the city wide church maybe you already have this is by pastor ashish um read this book it 
it will really help you to align your thinking um, and what the church is all about. And uh, uh, all right, so I think we'll come to a close. We'll stop here. We'll pick up from the next uh, week. Uh, any questions? Any questions? Anybody want to share your thoughts? Right. So I think the main takeaway is uh, don't lose passion, right? Don't lose passion for God, for God's work, and uh, trust God that He will be able to, you know, lead you uh, even through those hard seasons, through the good seasons. God is faithful. Amen. Right. So maybe one of us could uh, close in prayer. Uh, any one of us. Go ahead, anybody, close in prayer. Yes, go ahead, Jafina. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful class we had. God, we thank you for calling us. We thank you for choosing us even. You left the 99 and chased us down. And you have placed us right here with a great purpose. And we thank you so much for that. Help us to never lose passion for you. Help us to always look into you, no matter where we are, God. Thank you for loving us and thank you for the beautiful class. Thank you for uh, helping us to understand the role of evangelists and pastors and teachers, God. Um, give us the boldness that we need so that we can go out and preach the gospel boldly. Be with us and guide us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a good week ahead. I'll see you next week. God bless you all.